before I start confession, I just wanted to double check. I should have asked initially, does everybody have one of the little communion packets? Anybody not? A couple of folks? Okay. Peter, can you put yours on and take a one, two, three, at least four? Who give me five? Who give me six? Seven? Just take the basket. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Put up your hand and Peter will take care of you. You know, with the, with the COVID levels, we'll still be, of course, wearing our masks again, and, um, uh, but we'll still use, continue to use the little, little communion uh, pieces and as, as opposed to coming up here and going by each other and we're automatically kind of sitting apart a little bit so that's good and we are um, while Peter's handing those out we are going to be the choir is going to be coming back into worship next week and we're going to continue to have more music in the worship service singing of the Kyrie and the hymn of praise instead of speaking them on non-communion Sundays so really look forward to, uh, to a beautiful musical gathering thank you Peter well friends we arise for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people. God, throughout the ages you transform sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us a people ready to proclaim your promises to the whole world. Through Jesus Christ, our healer and Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Today's reading is from Isaiah, chapter 35, verses 4 through 7a, and we read from Isaiah. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life.
Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged Jesus to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged Jesus to lay his hand on them. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears and spat and touched his tongue. Then, looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of our Lord. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for we, together with those who were present when you opened the ears and loosened the tongue and were astounded beyond measure, know that through your grace we are filled with your salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. They were astounded beyond measure. When I was a boy, my dad put one of these in my hand, measuring tape, and taught me how to use it to measure out wood, and I would help him when he was cutting boards, building something. And from that day on, I used it numerous times. Might be a board where I was building something, and I'd measure out a certain space, and I would take that board, and I would put it where it belonged and didn't fit. I don't know that tape measure. Wasn't my fault. Oh, well, we can measure all kinds of things in every kind of way, but how do we measure the grace that God bestows to us in Jesus Christ? How do we measure grace? Do you remember the psalm of David, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want? And one of my favorite lines in there is, My cup runneth over. That's the section that we are sitting down to banquet and the wine cup, the chalice, is just flowing with wine or flowing with grace. Well, when David wrote that, was it his song of the grace of God? Did the grace of God go about this far and no farther? Hey, I'm the king of Israel, you're not. Not my problem. You find your own grace. Or was the grace of God in Jesus Christ already further than that? Mark wants to help us understand the measure of grace, forgiveness in Jesus the Messiah. And so one of the stories that he tells us today is the story of the man who cannot hear and so he cannot, um, he has not learned to speak clearly. <clears throat> and if you can't hear and you look at a letter on a piece of paper, you look at a T, 
How are you supposed to know that that's a t sound? It's, you might be able to read and write brilliantly, but how do you know what sound goes with it? And so you watch the lips of your mentor, your teacher, and you begin to make sounds that go with the letters, and they'll tell you yes, no, a little, you know, something to get you more acquainted with your speech to sound so that you can speak as well as write. Well, does then the measure of the grace of God go only to the children of God? For that man was one of the children of God, an Israelite. And the Messiah was for the Hebrew people, the Jewish people. It was, he was for Israel. So does the grace of God go that far? It says, no, I go farther than that. I think I've got a jump rope now. And so he tells the story of a woman. Jesus is in the area of Tyre. Now, Tyre is a city that is on <coughs> the coast of the Mediterranean. Syrophoenicia is a little strip of land, a little area between Israel, Syrophoenicia, just a little thing, and the Mediterranean Ocean. And those people were the great seafarers of their day, <coughs> and merchants with, and so forth. So Jesus is in Tyre, one of the cities in that area. He wants to go in a house, he wants to be alone by himself, but a woman comes in, and Mark is very careful to tell us that this woman is a Greek. She is not one of the children. She is what some of the children, if they had a mean streak in them, would call a dog. The Gentiles were called dogs, if you didn't like them. That was the slang. And so here is this woman, a dog, who breaks into the house, comes in, sees Jesus, and falls on her feet at the, falls on her face at the feet of Jesus. And she says, my little girl is sick and she has a demon and please cast the demon out and he doesn't now what did that woman's daughter go through what was she going through if you are possessed by a demon what kind of anguish and throttling might happen there you know, when, the, when Jesus um, teaches the man, opens the ears of the man and opens his tongue, it says his tongue was unbound, as if it had been in chains. And now this little girl is bound by a sermon, by a, by a demon. She might be bound by a sermon too, but, but bound by a demon. And I expect that the mother has taken her to every which way and kind of shaman and medical quack and everybody else to try to relieve her, wouldn't you? And she hears about Jesus and she comes and she falls at the feet of Jesus and she says, my daughter has a demon, please release it. And Jesus says, it is not right. It is not right to take the food from the children and throw it to the dogs. Which could be translated, it is not right to take the gift of God to the Israelites and throw it to the Greeks. No. But the woman, she doesn't get up You'd almost imagine she'd get up and slap him in the face for that. She doesn't. She stays at the floor, at the feet of Jesus. And what animal do we have as a pet that usually is at our feet? A dog. And she says, yes, Lord. Okay, Lord. But even the dogs get the scraps that fall from the children's table, just the crumbs. Give me the crumbs for my daughter. 
and I will be at peace. And Jesus says, Rise up, for saying this, your daughter has been healed. And so, the grace, I can't make it say straight, I don't think, the grace of Jesus through her went out to all and is still going to this day. So how do we measure grace? We don't measure it with this. We measure it with the experience of the grace given to us in Jesus Christ. When I first learned how to use one of these, I learned how to use this, and yes, I mismeasured things. But what I don't remember learning from my father was grace. What grace is. I thought, well, my father never taught me about grace. But then I remembered one day when I was in graduate school in the theater in Syracuse, and I just needed to leave and get home, to be home again. And my father emptied out a van that he used for work, and he drove that van with my brother in the passenger seat, and they drove from Virginia up to Syracuse, packed all my things, took me home. What is the measure of grace? Well, in one case, it's a van driving from Virginia. I had a friend who was deaf and blind, at least by the time she was uh, very, very elderly. And she was under the care of hospice at home. She got to the point where <clears throat> She was not speaking anymore. She was, you know, there, deaf and blind. And when her aides came in to help her, she wouldn't know somebody was there until they touched her. And then she wouldn't know what is going to happen to me next. So she was anxious. But there was one hospice person that as soon as she came into the door of her bedroom, my friend would go, <sighs> she would relax. Now she couldn't see her. She couldn't hear her. So why did she relax? Perfume. Perfume. And she knew that when that perfume came into her room, grace would follow. How do we measure grace? With a fragrance, with a van, with a tongue let loose in praise, with breaking the bonds of in the case of Jesus and the Syrophoenician woman of race and gender and all of these things. How do we measure grace? Well, I measure grace to be 62 inches long, 5 feet 2 inches or however long Jesus' hands were when they were stretched upon the cross. Because when they were nailed to that cross, then grace went out, unbounded, immeasurable for all. Amen.
Friends, we arise to confess our faith together in the Apostles' Creed. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe, I believe in, in God, the, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy One, you bring your people together in worship. Enliven your church. Guide all evangelists, preachers, prophets, and missionaries who seek to share your love through word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. You provide water for thirsty ground and sunshine to feed hungry plants. Bless all who advocate for healthy forests, unpolluted air, and clean waterways. Inspire all people to show care for the world you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. You show no partiality. Increase justice in all nations. Encourage leaders and governments to work with one another for the good of our common world, especially as we celebrate Labor Day. Unite us in seeking the health, safety, and dignity of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. You accompany those who are most in need. Shelter all fleeing violence or persecution. Protect any who are in danger and sustain them through uncertainty and unstable times. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You support the work of your disciples. Continue to nurture the leadership and ministries of this congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Tend to all in need of your compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. Give community to the lonely and neighbors to the outcast. Shelter all who are vulnerable in body, mind, or spirit. We pray especially this day for Joe, Chuck, Jerry, Sandy, Steve, Nancy, Mary, Marie, Olivia, Xander, Elise, Jack, Jane, Brooklyn, and those we name aloud are in our hearts before you. Jackie. Let us pray. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. You embrace all who have died in the faith and brought them into your glorious presence. We thank you for their example and rejoice in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Peace to you, Peter. Peace to you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, 
Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life, and so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. Almighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed and was obedient to your will, even to the giving of his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Therefore, O oh God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us, and believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, to one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now let us feast this Pentecost season on Christ, the bread of heaven. Alleluia. You may be seated as we join in Holy Communion. The body of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ, 
shed for you. Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let everyone who seeks the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He recalls his promises and leads his people forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. Living God, you have greeted us in our brokenness and nourished us with the body of Christ broken for us. Risen to new life with you, send us now to bear your healing love into the wounded world. In the name of our risen Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace, and give you peace, and give you peace forever. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you, and give you peace and give you peace, and give you peace forever. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Okay. 